welcome back in today's video we are going to discuss about health programs in india this is a new topic in our social and preventive medicine let us begin with the national vector borne disease control program each of the national health programs will be discussed uh, part by part in separate videos to begin with we have the national vector borne disease control program which is focused on controlling the vector borne diseases namely malaria elimination of lymphatic filariasis kala azar japanese encephalitis dengue fever or dengue hemorrhagic fever chikungunya fever so guys we see that it is mainly focused on the control of the six vector borne diseases what are the six vector borne diseases the national vector borne disease control program the six let uh, six letters are there and it is focused on controlling six vector borne diseases which are those vector borne diseases they are malaria lymphatic filariasis kala azar japanese encephalitis dengue fever and chikungunya fever now let us begin with the national vector borne disease control program the introduction to it it is implemented in the states or the union territories so we know what is the main objective of this nvbdcp it is for the prevention and control of vector borne diseases simple guys what do we do here we prevent national vector borne disease control program see we see here disease control program that is prevention and control of vector borne diseases those are malaria filariasis kala azar japanese encephalitis dengue and chikungunya so by now you are very well aware of the six national vector borne diseases what are those can you uh, list it out we have malaria filariasis lymphatic filariasis kala azar japanese encephalitis dengue and chikungunya fine moving on the states are responsible for the planning implementation and supervision of the program so we see that it is at the state level the states are held responsible for the planning for the implementation as well as the supervision of the programs since these vector borne diseases are the major pro public health problems in india we have uh, made the states responsible for the planning implementation and supervision of these program okay under the national vector borne disease control program three pronged strategies are there for the prevention and control of vector borne diseases what are the three strategies they have brought in for the prevention and control of these vector borne diseases what are the strategies they are disease management in the first place then we have integrated vector management you can see integrated vector management and thirdly we have supportive interventions supportive supportive interventions clear guys what are the three we saw uh, they were disease management disease management second we saw was integrated vector management and last third one was supportive intervention so let us see all three in detail what are those starting with starting with disease management disease management how do we manage a disease by early case detection detecting the cases as early as possible and giving a prompt and a complete treatment how do we manage the disease detect the disease early treat give the proper prompt complete treatment to the disease next we have strengthening of the referral services so we see that in the next step how do we manage the disease by strengthening the referral services what are the referral services for example now a case got detected in anganwadi or the primary health center in a village 
now if the uh, you know required the treatment is not possible there then they refer the case if the treatment is not possible there they refer the case to the higher level it could be chc or in the urban areas these hospitals institutions uh, so all of these uh, you know th these are the referral uh, services we have to strengthen the referral services next epidemic preparedness and rapid response so if in case an epidemic breaks out, so for example, if there were some uh, climatic changes, uh, there was natural calamities or something like that came up, then uh, if an epidemic outbreak occurs, we have to uh, identify those epidemic areas. Uh, we have to maintain the risk factors, conceive those uh, alarm signals. Okay, We have to understand those alarm signals and uh, detect them and monitor those risk factors. So, epidemic preparedness and a rapid response is given to that outbreak of an epidemic. Following, we have integrated vector management. Before going to the integrated vector management, let us uh, revise the disease management. What did we do? The case detection. We detected the case, okay? Uh, individual. Let us imagine an individual. In that individual, we detected the case. Then we gave the complete treatment. In case the treatment is not possible here, we strengthen the referral services so that uh, further treatment can be given in a more effective way. Lastly, uh, if it's not just one individual if there is an epidemic outbreak we are preparing and giving a rapid response clear guys case detection treatment strengthening referral services epidemic preparedness and rapid response fine moving on to the integrated vector management now that was the disease how did you manage the disease first point is disease management second is we are managing the vector okay we are managing the vector integrated vector management how can we manage this vector by indoor residual spraying in the selected high risk areas you can see here the indoor residual spraying you're doing in the selected high risk areas visit those high risk areas and do this indoor residual spraying next use of insecticide treated bed nets you can see here they are using the insecticide treated bed nets and lastly, uh, we have uh, the use of larvivorous fish and anti-larval measures in urban areas. Use of larvivorous fish. The fish which will eat the larva of this vector. And then anti-larval measures in the urban areas. You can see use of larvivorous fish. So with this uh, pictures, uh, with this slide, you can, uh, you know, tell all the... the, the vector management how do they uh, do the vector management by residual indoor residual spraying in the selected high risk areas was our first point then that the second is use of insecticide treated bed nets and lastly the use of larvae viral fishes and anti-larval measures in the urban areas cool guys three things indoor residual spraying insecticide treated bed nets larvae virus fish and you can also tell the anti-larval uh, measures in the urban areas, okay, in urban areas. Fine. Next, we move on to the third strategy that is supportive intervention. Supportive interventions includes the behavior change communication. Now, third is the supportive. First, what did we see? First, disease management, disease management. Second, the integrated vector management. Last, third is supportive intervention, support, okay, supportive intervention. Supportive intervention include the behavioral change communication. So, the behavioral change communication, which it is nothing but an interaction or the interactive process with the individuals, the community, uh, so that they can develop the strategies to promote a positive health behavior in the individuals based on the current social conditions we have to uh, help the people to solve their health problems on their own and uh, improve the strategies and bring in a positive health behavior by the communication 
next public private partnership and intersectorial convergence you can see uh, the public private partnership okay the public hospitals and private hospitals the partnership intersectorial convergence we are also um, you know having connections with uh, the um, teaching uh, medicinal sector and uh, the other sectors uh, like uh, ngos non governmental organizations uh, and the uh, international organizations we are having an intersectorial convergence with them and also the public private partnerships human resource development human resource development where we are improving the skills and knowledge of the people monitoring and evaluation through periodic field visits we need to monitor and evaluate the cases so that there is no epidemic breakout we have to go uh, to the uh, areas do the field visits monitor the cases evaluate the cases and uh, do the periodic field visits through the periodic field visits we can monitor and evaluate vaccination against the japanese encephalitis you can see uh, we can also it is a supportive measure that is the vaccination against the japanese encephalitis lastly we have this uh, annual mass drug okay uh, we do this uh, annual mass drug administration against the lymphatic filariasis you can see here annual mass drugging so what are the supportive interventions guys behavioral change communication uh, we'll do it here behavioral change communication then we had public private partnership then uh, it in third was the human resource development okay including uh, we are improving the skills and knowledge human resource development next we have uh, this uh, periodic uh, field visits to monitor and evaluate the cases and uh, vaccination against japanese encephalitis mass drug administration against lymphatic filariasis clear guys these are the three strategies uh, for the national vector borne disease control program in the next video we'll start uh, discussing about malaria in detail okay thank you i hope you like the video if you have any doubts put it in the comment section and if you like the video hit the like button and please to subscribe